What's up everyone? Welcome back to another review and this time we're taking a look at Silver Bullet written by Stephen King adapted from his novella known as The Wolf Cycle. Now I have never seen Silver Bullet nor have I read the novella The Wolf Cycle so I'm going to do my best to review this movie to the best of my abilities. But after having read but after having read the a brief synopsis of Wolf Cycle and after seeing Silver Bullet I can honestly say this. As a movie, I thought Silver Bullet was a cheesy, entertaining werewolf movie. However, <clears throat> I think this movie would have fared better and would have been a much and would have been and would have been a much more interesting werewolf movie if Stephen King would have stayed more closely to his own source material. <clears throat> but as the movie stands, it's entertaining. Uh, it ain't the greatest werewolf movie you'll ever see. Uh, you can clearly tell that this is a movie that that faced a lot of production troubles and is really the tale of two cities as two separate directors made this uh, film this movie. <clears throat> but as an overall finished product, for what it is, it's at least coherent enough. Like I said, it is fun. Uh, it does feel most. It does feel like a like a like a parody in a lot of ways. <clears throat> uh, there are certain scenes where it could be dark. And then there are other scenes where the wolf is attacking and it's almost played for laughs. It's like you're watching a dark comedy in a way. Like Silver Bullet's really one of those movies that you're either going to like it or you're going to hate it. I'm, I I liked it for what it was. It was a cheesy little horror film. Uh, some of my positives are really the cast. I think this movie is really well is really well rounded in terms of its cast. You have Co you have a young Corey Heim, two years before he had his breakthrough with Lost Boys, playing his kid, playing his paraplegic named uh, Marty. Uh, I like Corey Hyman's movie. He came across as very, very likable. He's not not annoying whatsoever. Despite being in a wheelchair, he he has a lot of energy. He acts like a real kid. Uh, he has a crazy eccentric uncle played by Gary Busey, who is one of the best parts of this movie. I actually like the chemistry between Gary Busey and Corey Hyman. They work really well off one another. <clears throat> and I really, I really see an uncle nephew vibe between these two. Uh, the actress who plays uh, his sister Jane, no, she was fine in the role as well. Uh, there's some scenes where she, where she can come across as kind of annoying, but I like the brother and sister dynamic between her and Marty, especially when they're doing when they're doing their own Hardy Boy investigation as to which member of the townsfolk is the werewolf. <clears throat> so, and the movie's also told through a through a narration of an older Jane telling the story of the summer of 1976 and the werewolf attacks. So that was okay. Uh, other members of, of the supporting cast, aside from Gary Busey, you have the awesome Terry O'Quinn, who has a, who plays the town sheriff. This movie came out a couple of years before Terry O'Quinn had his breakthrough with the stepfather. And, th and this one, he's a police sheriff named Joe Haller. Um, if I were to give this movie a big gripe, a big criticism, not enough Terry O'Quinn in this movie. I, I think if, like I said, and this goes back to Stephen King choosing not to do a full adaptation of his, uh, of his, uh, of his own novel. So in the book, the uh, the wolf attacks are done once a month. If you're familiar with the with the lunar cycle, a full moon happens once every three to four weeks, give or take. Uh, I think if Sting would have stayed Sting, I think if King would have stayed more closely to that, it would have built up much more mounting dread, much more mounting tension, and would have it would have actually made it would actually would have given Haller much more to do in terms of his investigation as to who the werewolf is. <clears throat> but Stephen King chose to condense everything into what feels like the span of a week. Um, I give him credit for wanting to condense his own story, but I also think he cut out he, a lot of the dread and a lot of the tension and suspense got cut out with it, because everything's happening within the span of a couple of days. You don't, to me, you don't get that that overall that overarching sense of this town slowly trying to shield itself from the fear of this beast that's haunting them. <clears throat> and again. It also gives the again that and that cycles back to the sh to the sheriff character in which he just you know investigates a couple of people gets into a few arguments with t for some town folks he meets the wolf he meets the werewolf and then he gets killed off by it. Uh, at least this movie did give me a scene of uh, Gary Busey and Terry O'Quinn exchanging some dialogue. I would have liked that scene to go up to go on much longer than it did, but the fact that, that it's in this movie I'll let it slide. <clears throat> and just Terry O'Quinn's presence along with Gary Busey is an incident two punch combo in the points column to me at least and you also have everett mcgill as this mysterious reverend who is revealed to be the werewolf itself uh i like everett mcgill i liked him in people on this i think his role in people under the stairs is much more better in which he gets to flex more of a uh in which he gets to be more animated with the role but then again 
even though I like him better than people on the stairs, I do like him in this. He does give the Reverend character this mysterious dread to him. And to be honest with you, he's more creepier in human form than he is in, in wolf form, which is unintentionally hilarious because it legitimately looks like a bear and <clears throat> not like a werewolf. Like the scene where he's where he's having a nightmare about the townsfolk transforming into werewolves, those costumes look more like werewolves than his did. <clears throat> uh, but I overall liked him in the role. He had the right amount of creepiness to him. Uh, the movie is, the his motivation is being played up as God giving him werewolf powers in order to, <laughs> in order to weed out the wicked. Uh, there's this one, the, the, the first kill is this pregnant woman who debates on suicide. And he killed her as a way to, as a way for her not to commit that sin in a way. Like, it, it, like it, you don't really get a full explanation as to why, as to his motivations, but it's, but it's more or less, he's, it's more along the lines of a messenger from God type of deal and being given the powers of the wolf in order to weed out the wicked in his mind, so to speak. So that is what it is. And we never really get an explanation as to how the Reverend even got these wolf powers to begin with, which is, it's left really, really vague. Uh, yeah, so there's that. However, I do like some of the wolf kills. Like I like the first wolf kill we see is all, is is a, a quick cut of him chopping off a guy's head. As I mentioned earlier, he kills the girl who's trying, who's debating on committing suicide in her bedroom. Um, he also kills a kid off screen, if you, I think off screen in, in a very gruesome aftermath, which leads to a very unintentional, funny reaction from that dead kid's father. And then moments later, that same actor gives a better performance when he's explaining, his, where he's explaining to the sheriff that he doesn't know the meaning of what he's going through after the sheriff berates the townsfolk of wanting to do hand out private justice and vigilante justice to try and find the killer slash the maniac. But all this builds up to the fog scene in the woods in which the werewolf dispatches a bunch of townsfolk. And this scene is unintentionally hilarious because the actors are playing it up as if they're doing a comedy. It is hilarious and just ridiculous <clears throat> as to what's happening. And then you have this scene of a werewolf, of the werewolf using a baseball bat to kill, uh, to kill one of the guys played by Lawrence Tyranny, <clears throat> you know, Joe from Reservoir Dogs. That's where I feel this movie goes into unintentional hilar hilarity because why is a werewolf using a baseball bat? That is so weird. A base a wolf should not be using a baseball bat. You got fangs, you got claws, you got teeth, you, you have ungodly strength. You shouldn't be using a baseball bat. What are you, Sammy Sosa? So yeah, I thought that was stupid. And it, it, it just feels like a contrived way to get this specific prop to be shown later on in the scene when the sister is trying to do her own investigative work because after this scene, we have a scene where Marty confronts the beast and shoots a rocket in its eye, blinding it, which now creates this whole mystery of who has the blind eye. And that's when it's revealed that the Reverend is the one who's the werewolf. And he took the baseball bat and planted it in his garage. Again, it's a very contrived way of doing things. Like it would have made a little bit more sense if the number one, the wolf didn't use the bat or, <clears throat> or if the bat just mysteriously ended up in the garage after the Reverend was doing like a walk and then took the prop. Uh, that's just how I would have done it, <clears throat> to be honest with you. Uh, in terms of other things of this movie, I do like some of the directing. Some of the directing in this movie is pretty decent. I mean, it does have a stand by me feel to it. Uh, so that can be a little, so it does have a stand by me feel to it in a lot of scenes, specific, specifically with uh, with Marty and his friend Brady and them making fun of his sister, pulling a dr uh, prank on her. And then you get the whole brother sister dynamic in which it's the Hardy Boys fighting Reverend Werewolf, to quote Gary Busey, one of the best lines in the whole movie. <clears throat> so yeah, um, like yeah, again, like this movie, it is, it is very entertaining. It's a cheesy werewolf movie. It's not perfect. I've seen better werewolf movies like American Werewolf in London, which did a much better job at combining its humor and its horror. You get The Howling, which is another good werewolf movie that came out around this around that 80s time frame. No Silver Bullet. I think if Silver Bullet would have stuck more closer to the novella, it would have been a much better movie, my opinion. Before how it stands, it's a decent little werewolf movie that has a decent yet somewhat underwhelming climax at the end, where uh, where uh, Gary or Uncle Red, you know, takes this takes the uh, takes these two medallions that his uh, niece and nephew gives him. He goes to a gunsmith. He boils it down to a silver bullet. And then the Reverend breaks into the house in werewolf form and then is shot in the eye and dies, basically. Like, yeah, like the last, like the entire climax is very, really, really rushed and anticlimactic. And that's another, that's a, another gripe against it. 
And not only that, you can tell this movie was made in the 80s because Gary Busey makes his uh, paraplegic nephew a rocket ship like motor scooter, which is so just random and out there. But it does give us some decent scenes, like when he first sees the werewolf and then when the Reverend's trying to run him off the road. <clears throat> so, you know, that was fine for what it was. So, overall, I'm going to give Silver Bullet a solid 6 out of 10. It's a decent werewolf movie. It's fun, it's entertaining, and I like it. It does have some decent moments of suspense. It does got some good gore effects. I do like when the wolf kills the, uh, the, the railroad worker. I like when he kills the girl in the house. I like how when he kills an abusive father who is searching a greenhouse and all the other, and, and some of the chase scenes have some good suspense to it as well. So yeah, six out of 10 for Silver Bullet. Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.